Okay. So thank you, everyone. Um, good morning and good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining from. Uh, Indo-American Cultural Connect is a non-for-profit organization. And our mission is to really uh, promote Indian classical music and dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been in existence for over 10 years now and have uh, collaborated. We yeah, can see uh, I'm in a, I'm in color. Sorry, Anuanti, were you saying something? Hello? Can everybody hear me? Yes, I can hear. Okay. I can. So we've been promoting any classical music and dance and we've uh, provided platform for a lot of teachers in the Valley to showcase uh, their art and also the students. Right, we provide a, a platform for the students to come and demonstrate their skills and their passion for the Indian classical music and dance. So we've tried a lot of different things. We've had artists from um, within the Valley. We have invited guest artists from other states in the US. And we are also very privileged that uh, we have artists who have come from India and uh, performed on our platform. So we are very grateful, Raji, to have you with us today and for uh, your time. And um, uh, we look forward to this conversation today. Thank you. Okay, so I guess uh, many have joined, so I may start. Sure. So let me start with uh, singing one song, then, then I'll start talking. So I'm just uh, singing one ghazal, very famous. Start on a light note. I just sang this very famous puzzle, uh, or you can call it song. So today uh, I am uh, thinking to talk about classical music and also light music, Indian classical music and Indian light music. So I will uh, put some topics and I will uh, little bit explain, and then I will keep asking you to ask me anything if you want to ask in that topic. Like the first topic I am taking is types of two, there are two types of music. Uh, I will uh, say that if you, you can manage to have some notebook and pen, you can keep noting down whatever you want, whatever you find uh, interesting or uh, to note it down, you can note it down. So <clears throat> when we talk about Indian, music or Indian classical music, 
there are two types of indian classical music one is north indian classical music and one is south indian classical music north indian classical music is also called hindustani shastriya sangeet or sometimes it is just called hindustani sangeet and south indian music is called carnatic sangeet so these two types of music uh, are there in classical music especially these are different styles of singing uh, not in only in uh, style of rendering but language also is different like in hindustani language is uh, bridge bhasha it is called hindi dialect folk hindi mostly in hindustani classical this folk hindi language bridge bhasha it is called that is used and uh, in, if, uh, in you see in carnatic music uh, kannad uh, from which the name carnatic is there so kannad telugu tamil malayalam this south indian languages are used in south indian lang- uh, music also sanskrit is used and in previous uh, hindustani music sanskrit was used but from i can say uh, about 500 years the main language of hindustani classical music hindustani shastriya sangeet is bridge bhasha folk type of hindi so this is about uh, two types of indian classical music and uh, uh, one thing we have to understand about this uh, our especially indian classical music there is a concept called rag so the, both these systems are based on a concept called rag so that's why generally we also say that indian music is especially means indian classical music is rag sangeet because in this when you sing classical music in uh, hindustani or carnatic style you don't just sing a song but you sing rag you take some rag and then within that rag you sing some song that's why it is called rag sangeet okay so this was the first topic i will just ask you if you want to ask anything more about this anyone can open your mic and you can ask me so i guess there is no question just now okay we'll move forward now uh, now in general if we talk about music so music has two basic elements so all of you know to these two basic elements are sur and taal if we little go deeper we can say sur and lay lay makes taal so basically if we see very basically it is sur and lay in general it we say sur and taal sur taal like this so now we'll try to understand these two basic elements of this music so music uh, is expressed by these two mediums sur and taal so we have to understand these two mediums very nicely so the first thing sur so what is sur uh, uh, we also call it swar so swar means musical note so you see musical note it means the first thing is sound it is some kind of sound so what kind of sound any kind of sound is not music or not sur so uh, there should be some uh, the quality of sound is such that it is pleasant to ears so this is first thing the sound which is pleasant to ears can be used as a music and then in that now we have to if we try to understand little deeper about sur or swar then i will give you one definition of swar swar is stable frequency of sound stable frequency of sound i am showing you swar means swar or musical note is stable frequency of sound so we have to understand this the stable frequency in these two words first we have to understand what is frequency so to understand frequency we have to understand that any sound is created by vibrations so frequency means vibrations per second when there is some vibration then only sound is created this is physics you must have learned this in physics that any sound to be produced there should be a vibration so when there is some vibration 
then sound is produced when this vibration gets some regularity or stability vibration frequency means vibration per second so suppose some sound is 100 hertz per second this is hertz is a uh, unit of frequency so 100 hertz per per second this frequency if something some object is moving vibrating then it will create one particular sound this sound becomes sur or musical note so this is how we can understand swar means stable frequency of sound if frequency is con continuously fluctuating it it won't be pleasant to ears so it won't become swar or musical note so musical note is a stable frequency of sound now now we uh, any question uh, uh, regarding uh, swar i i believe that uh, one should understand the very basics of music that is what is swar and what is taal or lay hmm? so uh, i am thinking that today i will more talk about uh, basics and indian classical music and tomorrow i will talk about uh, light music and uh, other aspects of light music so this is sur now we have to understand what is taal so uh, to understand taal first we have to understand lay so what is lay so lay can be understood as same time between the beats same time between the beats now when we say beat in hindustani music beats means matra the hindi word used for beats is matra so when something becomes beat when we count something just we are counting 1 2 3 4 then that is not a beat what is beat or what is matra beat is called beat when the time between each counting is same suppose we are counting 1 2 3 4 <laughs> so the whatever time we take to say 2 after 1 same time will take to say 3 after after 2 and 4 after 2 like this we count in same time then this is called lay to maintain the same time so i'll, I'll say 1 2 3 4 5 6 so like this i am taking same time the time can be more or less suppose time is more then it will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 or if time is very less between beats then 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 like this but whatever this less time or more time it should remain same time between each counting then it is called beat so like this maintaining time so we can say from this that music is basically depends on two things sound and time these are the two basic elements which are used in music so again we will go to lay so lay is maintaining same time between the beats and depending on that because uh, when we uh, take some particular time and we count beat then we get the speed so in general in general lay means speed of taal speed of taal because by maintaining this time we get some speed either it is slow or fast so lay also can be said speed of taal this particular word lay is used in hindustani music or indian music now we have to understand what is taal now uh, this lay can be of uh, three types so this uh, when you uh, start learning music theory hindustani music then you see that there are three types of speeds slow speed medium speed and fast speed so terms used for this in hindustani music are vilambit lay मध्य लय एंड द्रुत लय विलंबित मध्य एंड द्रुत तो दिस आर इन जनरल थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ स्पीड स्लो स्पीड विलंबित मीडियम स्पीड मध्य एंड फास्ट स्पीड द्रुत सो नाउ वी अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज ताल
So tal can be defined as repetition of particular number of beats. Repetition of particular number of beats. Repetition of particular number of beats. This is tal. So as I, uh, in, the, in the definition of tal, you can see that the term comes beats. Beat means matra. In Hindi, we call it matra. So particular matra. So already matra, I defined that matra is matra if, when time is maintained. Now maintaining the time, suppose we count four and then we keep repeating this four, counting of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And it continues. The cycle of four beats continues. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then, Thomas' mic is open. Uh, Anuji or someone, please see someone's mic is open. Okay, so uh, particular number of beats are repeating. So this cycle of four beats is repeating. So tal is, this is called tal. This, this is called tal of four beats. So four beats are repeating. Suppose three beats are repeating. One, two, three, one, two, three. And it continues. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then this will be called tal of three beats. So like this, we have to understand tal means repetition of particular number of beats. So I I believe that this uh, till now what I explained about the two basic elements of music, sur and tal and tal. Uh, it depends on life, means maintaining time. So I hope everyone has understood this. If you have any question regarding this, what is sur, what is tal, what is lay? If some question arises to you, you can ask me, open your mic and you can ask. Anyone uh, want to ask any question? Uh, Rahulji, uh, namaste. Um, uh, this is Amit Srivastava from New Jersey. Uh, yes. I, I have a question on like a number of swars, like uh, like basically, we we always know like there are twelve like, notes, right? Uh, but is that uh, is that also applicable in like Indian classical or because there's always a confusion like you know there there are more notes than twelve. So if you can tell. Yeah. So about uh, that, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Till now I have not explained about uh, types yeah. of notes and number of notes. Just just I explained what is note means what is swar. So now my okay. next topic is that that. How many notes are there, etc. Some more details about musical notes. So uh, I hope the basic thing you understood that swar is, is some particular stable frequency of sound. So now we go to this topic, which Amitji has asked. So number of notes. So you see, in general, if we can say that in whole world's music, there are 12 musical notes. This is fixed. In whole world's music. There are 12 musical notes, 12 swars. Whether it is Western music, Indian music, Hindustani music or Carnatic music, Chinese music or whatever music, musical notes cannot be more than 12. This is in general, when we go very deep in a Hindustani system, we also realize that there are 22 shrutis. But this is little deeper concept. So just now I'm not going on that 22 Shruti. But in general, you can say there are 12 swars, 12 musical notes. So now in different cultures and different countries, names of these 12 notes are different. But the frequencies are same, these 12 notes. And why, why there are only 12 notes? Because that, that is a human limitation. Limitation of human ear. Otherwise, Musical notes has no limit. It can be infinite number of frequencies. Like musical note just means a frequency, particular stable frequency. So it can be any, num any number, infinite number of frequencies we can have. Suppose we have one frequency 100 hertz, then 101, 102, 104. It can go on. We can have number of frequencies. But 
we our human ear has some limitation according to that limitation the most commonly we can understand only 12 musical notes through our ear we can catch only 12 such stable frequencies now to understand it more the, now i will uh, explain in uh, terms of hindustani music what this 12 notes how we have named them in a hindustani system like in carnatic systems uh, system uh, some notes are little different names are little different so basic uh, generally we say sat sur sare gama padhani so this uh, sare gama padhani uh, names remain same in hindustani and uh, carnatic but their placings are different so just now i am i will explain according to hindustani system so hindustani system has two types of notes shuddh and vikrut shuddh and vikrut two types of swar shuddh and vikrut so there are seven shuddh swar sare gama pa dhani and five vikrut notes and vikrut notes are two types komal and tivra as i told you whatever you want to write you can write it down so this two types of notes shuddha are seven vikrut are five in vikrut there are two types komal and tivra komal is komal are four and tivra is one you can have a look just a minute so swar two type shuddh sare gama pa dhani i am writing in english so i am s r g m like this i have written so sare gama pa dhani and vikrut so vikrut are two types komal and tivra so when you see underline below the note then it is komal and when you see line above the note that is called tivra so this are signs to understand that note is tivra or komal underline means komal upper line means tivra and if there is no line then it is shuddh so like this there are 12 notes now we have to understand that the seven notes are uh, the prime they are called prime notes main seven notes shuddh swar and this komal and tivra are in between these notes so komal means the note before and tivra means note after means low frequency then the shuddh swar and high frequency then the shuddh swar so low frequency then shuddh swar means komal high frequency then shuddh swar means tivra so now this high frequency and low frequency notes then shuddh swar will come in between these 12 notes in in between these seven shuddh notes so now i will write this 12 notes in sequence so sequence of 12 notes so this is sequence of 12 notes you can see after sa it is komal re then shuddh re komal ga then shuddh ga ma then tivra ma then pa then komal dha and shuddh dha and komal ni and shuddh ni so you can see that always komal is before shuddh swar and one is tivra which is after shuddh ma so only one note is tivra ma and four notes are komal re komal re komal ga komal dha and komal ni again i will say underline means komal upper line means tivra and if there is no line means shuddh like this there are 12 notes in hindustani शास्त्रीय संगीत और इन जनरल वी कैन से हिंदुस्तानी संगीत तो इन होल वर्ल्ड देर आर दिस ट्वेल्व फ्रीक्वेंसीज इन म्यूजिक बट नेम्स आर डिफरेंट इन हिंदुस्तानी म्यूजिक लाइक दिस शुद्ध एंड विकृत एंड इन विकृत कोमल एंड तीव्र शुद्ध कोमल एंड तीव्र एंड द प्लेसिंग ऑफ दिस ट्वेल्व नोट एंड नेम्स आर फिक्स इट विल नेवर चेंज because it has evolved we don't know from how many centuries back it kept evolving and then these names are finally 
accepted by all and this is how we just now we identified musical notes in hindustani system any question no no question mm -hmm. rahul ji but uh, <coughs> you know maybe it down no really i can well. say that there are the students coming from a different <clears throat> from a different um, background so some of them may have already a lot of information already they know and some yes. there is new so um i think if anybody has a very bigger concept maybe before the yeah. for tomorrow maybe we can have some time for anything that is more complicated then we can discuss that so we won't get all the rest yeah. of them if you have any question you can ask me so see i i believe that uh, the base, very basic things uh, which i explained just now swar and tal and lai very basic how you can understand these three things because this is the main thing in music now whatever you uh, ask me uh, i will reply to you so rahul ji this is manika from uh, colorado um, yes are the 12 notes the same in hindustani and carnatic sangeet the fre uh, frequencies are same but names are different oh so like carnatic sangeet doesn't call them sare ga ma pa dha ni sa no it is called sare ga ma only but uh, some some difference like uh, which we call uh, shuddha swar uh, shuddha re in uh, hindustani uh, for them shudre is our komal re hindustani's komal re is their shudre like that some some placings are different some uh, names are different but the seven names remain same sare ga ma padhani just okay. komal tivra spacing are different okay thank you that names changes but the basic okay. seven notes that's why we generally say that there are seven notes in music because the main prime seven notes are same sare ga ma padhani these seven names are there just this uh, some notes can be komal and tivra and their placing can be different only understood in uh, hindustani and carnatic system but the seven basic notes are same tare ga ma pa dhani but i have another I, question like i have question. Question. okay go ahead uh, yeah. hi this is vaibhavi from phoenix i just yeah. were, uh, requesting you if you can uh, show the slide again about the sequence of the 12 notes sure I can't see it. Anu, yeah, I, I I can see it. Oh, I can't. Hmm. Ah, right, hold on one second. Sorry. Just, I I I. You can uh, I, what you I can, can do send you quickly, that. Maybe send it quickly. You can quickly you can take a pic and then <laughs> later you can see it. All right, I got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, I, 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 said, i had a question rahul ji mane maybe yes. when you were saying about our indian music indian yes. classical music maybe just just hint us back in the western music do they have uh, the same the frequency like do re mi has the same frequency yes yes this do re mi yeah. fa so all these are all, also same like sa re ga ma pa da ni and they all, they have this sharp and flat like we call it komal and tivra they call it flat and sharp komal means flat and tivra means sharp but okay. uh, as i said that this only the komal tivra placings are changed like they they have all for all seven notes they have flat and sharp but if you see in hindustani system only five notes can be komal and tivra sa and pa remain steady sa and pa cannot be komal and tivra in hindustani system but in their system it is not such any note can be flat or sharp Okay. Thank you. Any 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 more questions? But Rahul ji, um, in Western music, the number of sharps and flats is more than five, right? Uh, yes, yes. Like means uh, what happens? Means mm -hmm. actually, what happens? That same note, it can be called sharp also. The black. Uh, if you uh, if you see according to the keyboard, which the uh, which. Uh, used in any keyboard or any piano or harmonium so if, if you see the keyboard black notes all black notes have two names black note can be called sharp of the white note and can be called flat of the white note so corresponding white note uh, you have to consider the 
the black node which is after one white node that is called the uh, sharp of that node and before the white node that is called flat of that node that key right but and why i'm asking is because when we listen to the tanpura app or uh, you know i tanpura basically a lot of people a lot of us use that and there we have all of these western type of notes whereas we are trying to sing indian music to that so that gets confusing okay. so to clear this confusion uh, uh, totally i will explain to you the keyboard of western notes that will clear your all doubts about the keys which which are used in apps and on keyboard and everything so just little time i'll take to quickly draw the keyboard as you said this many people keep getting confused about this sharp flat and black key and white key and all such things so it is not very complicated to understand so this is how keyboard looks if you see to any musical keyboard you will find the pattern of two black keys together then some gap then three black keys together then again some some gap gap is means two white comes together after two black two whites to comes together so no black between these two white again three blacks and one white in between and again after three blacks two whites are together so this is how if you count from this white to this white you see that there are seven whites and five blacks so this is same as our hindustani system seven white means seven shuddha swar and in between this black keys are vikrut swar means komal and tivra so if you see if we consider this sa re ga ma pa dha ni white notes then you will see that between ga as, as you can see the sequence of 12 notes so between ga and ma there is no komal or tivra note similarly between ni and upper sa there is no uh, komal or tivra note so this ni and sa upper sa means this is sa and sa re ga ma pa dha ni and upper sa so this sa and uh, ga and ma this two white keys come together and otherwise all uh, one white key will follow with followed by one black key one white black white black white white again black white black white black white white like this so if you just uh, see it you will find it pattern of 2 3 2 3 like this you keep on going like this you will see like this so this is how keyboard is there now i have just written sa re ga ma pa dha ni so that you can understand that it is same as hindustani system now we have to understand names of this key c d e f g a b so you see when we see according to our system sa re ga ma pa dha ni it starts with c c d e f g a b so not starting from a b c d e f g but starting from c c d e f g and then a b so then this a b c d e f g will continue from here but it is like this so c d e f g a b these seven notes are called prime notes prime notes as on the keyboard so the key keys on the keyboard are c d e f g a b so there are seven white keys and these seven white keys keep repeating in keyboard so you have to understand that these seven white keys are named like this actually a b c d e f g but according to our hindustani system we we have to Uh, make it same then we have to start it from c then it becomes same as hindustani system the sequence will become same as 
our shuddha swar and vikrut swar so all vikrut will become black and all shuddha will become white keys so c d e f g a b now as i said all black keys have name according to the white key so this first black key will be called either c sharp or d flat second black key will either be called d sharp or e flat like this this third black key will be called f sharp or g flat so the black keys doesn't have their names only white keys have names c d e f g a b black key the names of black key are given according to the white key it, if it is if, uh, after the white key you uh, you have to consider it then it will be called c sharp and before the d key so it is called d flat so d sharp is same as c sharp sorry d flat is same as c sharp like this so i'll just write down c sharp d flat d sharp e flat f sharp g flat g sharp a flat a sharp b flat so this is how keys are named so in general if you see in the app flats are not used in apps in mobile apps when you are using mobile apps or some instruments like this kanpura instruments then they do generally don't use flat so they, they call all black keys sharp only so that's why you will find either the key c d e f g or you will find c sharp d sharp f sharp g sharp f a sharp so you can see here that there cannot be e sharp e sharp is not possible and c flat is not possible so this c flat is not possible and e sharp is not possible this like same if we see in uh, our thing then uh, ma cannot be komal and ni cannot be tivra like this whatever you you can find it but if you see the keys c flat key is not possible and e sharp key is not possible otherwise all keys are possible sharp and flat both i hope you understood this thank yes, you that was very helpful thank you you can take a screenshot if you want that later you can check it screenshot or pic you can take of this of your laptop screen okay so i hope i have cleared the doubt of uh, all these key names of west in western music because these key names are used universally in uh, in even in hindustani music carnatic music to identify keys on harmonium we use this system because this is a standard system in all over the world like the c key the c key has a particular frequency and this frequency is standardized in whole world so that standardization we also accept in hindustani music in carnatic music in whole world music it is accepted the c c note of the keyboard will have this particular frequency in any world's keyboard you will play the c note it will play the same sur same note same frequency so that's why this uh, western cdfg system of keys is used in all types of music because it gives some standard any question So should i say something else in some other topic i go ahead or anyone wants to ask any question and you can uh, now i am open means it's not that you, uh, if you want say anything you want ask then i will go ahead with some topics which i have thought in mind otherwise you can ask any topic regarding indian classical music Oh, gee, later on, if not now, I'd like to understand if we have time about the scales. Like, 
how to recognize the scale of a song that's playing and bring it down to your own scale and you know how to recognize like right. C sharp so the, a major minor yes. so those things are confusing yes so this uh, topic i will cover tomorrow when i will uh, talk about more about light music because this uh, uh, topic uh, uh, is mainly used in light music huh? right. in light music we need to change scales and we have to understand scales huh? for different songs there are different scales and we have to select some particular scale according to our range of singing so that this topic of scale is very important in light light music So thank you that I, i have thought it to cover tomorrow let us see but if there is time today also i can do it any other uh, question about classical music you know rahul ji we have always i i've been learning music but nobody told me that we always knew that there is 10 thoughts but right from you the first time i heard that there are not just 10 thoughts there may be 72 or how many ever and now we just pick these 10 because they are most common or something can you explain that to us yes okay fine so now i will go to the topic of thought so in indian classical music this thought is a very very important thing to understand so now first uh, to understand thought you must understand this 12 notes huh? and you must understand the sequence of 12 notes so i have i will write again the sequence of 12 notes so you can see in this sequence of 12 notes that a sa is only one then there are two rays one is komal which is before shudre and then shudre komal ray and shudre two types of rays ga are two types komal and shudre Ma are two types, should then komal. See, ma cannot be komal, ma can only be tivra. Then pa is only one. Pa is neither komal nor should, uh, nor no, komal nor neither komal nor tivra. Dha are two types, komal and should. Ma uh, ni are two types, komal and should. So this first thing, if you uh, want to understand this, then you want to understand what is thought. First, you have to understand this. and you have to realize that actually names are only 7 but notes are 12 why notes are 12 because re are two types ga are two types mo do and ni these five notes are two types so these five notes two types becomes 10 and sa and pa only one so 10 plus 2 becomes 12 so like this you have to understand how 12 notes are there in hindustani music now as i said there are seven notes so If we select seven uh, uh, one sequence of seven notes, sa re ga ma pa dha ni, sa re ga ma pa dha ni. So this one combination of seven notes, sa re ga ma pa dha ni. Out of every these two, we can select one and we can make many patterns like this. Suppose first I took only should this. Shuddh re ga ma dha ni. Sa and pa are always one only, so they will be there. But re out of these two re, I took shuddh. Out of these two ga, I took shuddh ga. Out of two ma, I took shuddh ma. Out of two dha, I took shuddh dha. Out of two ni, I took shuddh ni. Suppose I create one next sequence where only re is komal. Other I keep same all shuddh. This will become the second combination of sa re ga ma pa dha ni. Only re is komal. All other are shud. We can select out of two. We can select one. So next can be only ga komal, and other are shud. Like this, we can take in each note: re komal, ga komal, dha komal, ma ma tivra, dha komal, ni komal. We can keep making such sare gama padhani. Many sare gama padhani. Combination of sare gama padhan we can create. Then we can take two two also. Like we took sa re and ga komal, re ga komal. Then we can take re and re komal ma tivra. Then re komal dha komal, re komal ni komal. Like this we can keep making different combinations of sare gama padhan. So all will be called sare gama padhan 
but Rega Madhani will keep changing, will be different in every combination. And every set of seven nodes, Saregama Padani, all sets will be different because one or two or three or four or five nodes can be different. I hope you understood this, how this different Saregama Padani can be created out, out of this 12 nodes. Mm -hmm. All combinations of Sare Gama Padhani, well, Re Gama Dha and Mi will keep changing. So, how many such combinations we can get mathematically? So, mathematically, we can get 32 such combinations. Very important to understand this. That we can get 32 types of Sare Gama Padhani. If you Make Sare Gama Padhani combination out of these 12 nodes, we can get 32 types of Sare Gama Padhani mathematically. So, these 32 are called thought. This thoughts, S is for uh, many. So the name is thought. So thought means a combination of Sare Gama Padhani. So, in Hindustani music, like this, we get 32 thoughts. 32 types of Sare Gama Padani. Now, if you want to ask anything regarding this, please ask. I hope this concept, which is very, very important and people keep getting confused, but why now next thing I will explain why there are, this is a famous term called 10 thoughts. Basically, Karnatak has, yes. they have the yeah. same combination, so, but Karnatak has more thoughts. Yes. So, that is also a mathematics. Now, what happens in Hindustani system, as I said, we select only one out of this, either this ray or this ray. We don't select both ray or we don't select both ga. We don't select both ma. We, we select either of two. That's why we mathematically make only 32. But what they do, they can take even uh, in one combination, they can take sare ray gama padhanisa or saga ga or Samama, like they can use both versions also. Always there will be seven notes, but they can take Re Re both. So suppose they took Re Re both, then they have to make seven, then any one they will not take. Because they are taking two Re. So either Ga, Ma, Pada, Ni, anything they will not take. But they will make combination of seven notes. So because they use both, they can use both versions of Re, Ga, Madha and Ni. Their third becomes 72. Mathematically, in Carnatic music, there are 72 thoughts, but in Hindustani, we have only 32 because we select either of two notes like Komal and Shuddha, either Komal or Shuddha we select. So our combination will always be Sare Gama Padhani. Their combination can also be Sare Re Gama Padha or sa Saga Gama Padhani, like whatever, like this combination of seven notes they can make. That's why they get more mathematical such combinations and they get 72 thoughts. But it is rule of Hindustani music that you cannot take both Re or both Ga or both Ma together. That's why our thoughts can be only 32. So in Hindustani music, there are 32 thoughts. So the difference is our thought will always be Sare Gama Padhani. But their thought can be Sare Re Ma Padhani or Saga Ga Padhani like this. I hope you understood this. Thanks. Thanks. So there are actually total 32 thoughts. Out of these 32 types of Sare Ga Ma Padhani, Pandit Vishnu Narayan Bhatkhande. This name is very, very important in Hindustani music. This name is very, very important. I will write it for you. Pandit Vishnu Narayan Bhat Kande. Pandit Vishnu Narayan Bhat Kande. He was one musicologist who cleared out many doubts, who gathered all information all, from all over the India, especially in Hindustani music. And he compiled all theories 
and he created some new concepts and to make everything very clear and understandable. Because uh, in, in uh, previous times, there were di different kingdoms and there were different singers and different parts of all North India and all have all were having different, different concepts. But to create oneness in them, he started his musical journey. He met lots of pandits and ustads and all musicologists. And uh, he compiled all the information, the big research he did. And he created his own theory and practical books. And which are totally accepted in Hindustani music. And uh, uh, in present times, and since he wrote these books, all Hindustani music uh, artists and performers and students have accepted this system derived by him. So he, he had the big, big contribution in Hindustani music. He died in 1936. Before he died, he did all this big research and he, I'll tell you that he, he wrote six books for practical music. Means he collected many bandishes and different, different kind of songs based on North Indian music, means Hindustani music, like Thumri, Tarana, Bada Khyal, Chota Khyal, Dhrupad, Dhamar, like this. And he compiled them and many new bandishes also he created. And he wrote five, six books, which are called Pramik Pustak Malika. Pramik Pustak Malika. Six parts of Pramik Pustak Malika. So this six parts he has, yeah. He has deri he derived his own notation system, how to write music and read music. Before him, there was no such system of reading and writing music. Everyone was just listening to music, memorizing it and singing. There was no system of writing music, reading music, and then learning music. So he derived this notation system also, which is a big, big contribution. And in this, his own derived notation system, he wrote more than 2000 songs different different types of songs used in Indian classical, Hindustani classical music. In these six books, you'll find more than 2000 songs. Bharat Khandek Kramik Pustak Malika, six parts. And then he wrote four parts of theory, which is called Bharat Khande Sangeet Shastra. Sangeet Shastra. Four parts of Bhat Khande Sangeet Shastra. So anyone if wants to read, you can buy it from Amazon or any, anywhere and you can read this. You will get all the information about theory, theoretically and practically. Theoretically from these four books, Bhat Khande Sangeet Shastra and six parts of practically, six parts, Bhat Khande Kramik Pustak Malika. So just now you uh, see any teacher, most teachers are uh, teaching bandishes which are found in Bhat Khande Kramik Pustak Malika. Some, some bandishes are out of that also. And many uh, teachers keep creating their own bandishes also. But mainly for the beginners, whatever we teach as a teacher, we take it from Bhat Khande Kramik Pustak Malika. And we consider it an authentic text, textbook. That was how many years, man? As I said, he died in 1936. So, uh, since he wrote these books, it was wide, widely acclaimed all over the India in Indian Hindustani music. His journey started from 1919. Sorry, 1903. He was a he was a advocate barrister. So. He, he, he left his practice of this advocate and then he started his musical journey. He started meeting people and roaming all around 
the North Indian states and cities, and then he gathered all information and then he did all this work. Till he died, he kept doing something. He he uh, created many. He uh, uh, gathered people to have seminars and workshops together from different parts of India, and uh, they used to meet and they used to discuss about doubts about ragas and all other things of music. And then from this, then research is still going on. Now this subject has become like this that uh, we can do PhD in music because. He gave this base of theory. Before that, there was no PhD in music. There was no theory, no authentic theory. Now his theory is considered authentic and uh, consider, uh, considering it as a base, many PhDs are done. More research in different, different subjects of music. Any question? So after uh, Anu Anuji asked about the thought, so the main, uh, main thing which we arrive ultimately in Hindustani classical music or overall Indian music is the concept of rag. So, uh, when we understand this, and this is the main concept where we have to ultimately arrive, the concept of rag, which is very, very unique to the Indian music. First thing, it is very unique to Indian music. In whole world, this concept of rag is only in Indian music. And in uh, other world's music, they don't have this concept of rag. They just create, they just use 12 notes and they create music. But in our system, we, we have rag and within the rag, we create music. Especially in classical music. In light music, it is not such. Light music is same like them. You can create, take any notes out of 12 notes and you can create your music. But particularly in classical music, Shastriya Sangeet, we have to take one rag to sing and then within that rag, we can sing anything. So now I little explain what is rag. So rag in general, very in very easy language, if you have to understand rag, we can say that particular notes, notes means musical notes, swars, used in particular order. to create melody. This can be the easiest understanding of what is rag. Particular notes taken in particular order. Used in particular order and which creates melody. Like we have 12 notes out of these 12 notes we have to select some particular notes and the order also we have to decide in which order we'll sing these notes. And then the, the selection should be such that ultimately when we sing these particular notes in particular order, melody should be created. Suppose we select some random notes in random order and it, it is not creating melody, then that is not wrong. Rag should be such that it should create some melody. So last thing it comes that which creates melody. This is important. Not just some random notes taken in some random order and then we start singing. Not like that. Whatever we select should ultimately create some very good melody. Particular notes. So which particular notes will take and which particular order you will sing them and then that will create melody. This is called rag. Any question about rag? See, I, I have a question on the, this concept of the melody. Is the melody yeah. is like, you can say that is the, um, the who, who he, you know, that some, some, 
sometimes I see, I hear something, it just doesn't sound right, but other people like it. So how can you define a melody for the, in general? Yeah, yeah. So this is a, of course, as you said, this cannot be very much defined like that. It is, a, it is too much individualistic thing. Means someone can say that this is good melody. Someone can say this is not a good melody. So that's why sometimes we have a choice of songs. Like this song we like, this song we don't like. Or some people say this rag I like, this rag I don't like. So that is very subjective. That that cannot be defined. That's a, it, uh, here the you, melody word I used is just a generalized you, you know generalized way that something you like that is in in general we say melody means what melody means something we like to listen but if you are liking it then only it is melody for you otherwise it is not melody Thanks. but uh, but if I will say about ragas then mostly you will like this combination of notes which are already very famous ragas so if you when you sing these particular notes in particular order, which are all famous ragas, you will definitely find melodious. Huh? Yes. Okay. But some little rare ragas, some little uh, complicated combinations, you may feel that this is not so much melodious. Huh? So that is subjective. But yes. some main main ragas, if you uh, if you have heard some names like Yaman, Bhairav, Bhimpalasi, Kafi, uh, Bhairavi, all these ragas are very famous and very melodious. Any more question Master about Guruji. rag? Yes. Uh, Master Guruji. Uh, yes, Vyuman yes here. Yeah. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I just, uh, I'm sorry, I, I joined the class late. I, I think I, I skipped the third part, but uh, okay. um, I had something to ask about rag. Um, Guruji, yeah. you know the fact that uh, we have uh, a genre of music that is called the jazz. Uh, yeah. music and yes. uh, we all know that jazz music is uh, something that uh, it, it doesn't limit itself so just like you said that uh, a rag contains um, particular notes and we uh, we explore the rag by staying or singing those notes only which are yes. found in that rag so uh, do you yeah. think that we can uh, do you think that it uh, it is uh, it is doable to do a fusion between uh, a rag based song and a jazz piece definitely is it, is it... definitely definitely fusion can be done because these uh, two concepts are little bit similar the concept of jazz is also little bit same that some particular notes are taken in particular order hmm? so this is little similar concept uh, so uh, you see uh, um, i have one friend who was my classmate in uh, a college where i was i learned and when where i was teaching uh, she did PhD in this subject. Comparison of jazz and uh, rag or jazz and uh, Indian music. So, yes. of course, this uh, but theoretically she has explored in the uh, whole PhD thesis. Practically also we can do it. But for that, uh, we need experts from both the sides uh, to understand yes. everything. Like the person who is uh, knowing rag should know what is jazz exactly and the person who is doing jazz should know what is rag and then they can exactly. create something nice okay definitely this such fusions should be created such are the thought of thought fusions not confusion type fusions like anything you sing your way i sing my way and then it is fusion not like that it should be yes. thematic uh, you can get something very nice and yes. then this can be a good fusion okay Any question about Raag? I, I, I had a, yeah. a small question about uh, the third part since I missed it. Um, could you just clarify about um, from where the thoughts, the, the 32 thoughts that we have in vocal Hindustani music, from where do they originate? 32 thoughts, uh, I will have to explain again as you are asking. Quickly, I will say again. It's very, very easy to understand concept. It is totally yes. mathematical. I, mean, I, I think I have been recording this and I will send everybody. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Vyaman, I will I'll, uh, I'll send you. Then I'll, uh, I'll get it. Yes, I'll get it. Yes. yes. It's very uh, easy to understand concept. 30 to how from 12 notes, we can get only 32 thoughts in Hindustani music. There is yes. no other possibility. 
Hmm. Okay, any other question regarding tha, drags, swar, thal, lay? And otherwise, you can ask any question. Well, I, in fact, Guruji, I was asking. Uh, in fact, I followed the the math mathematical explanation that you gave about how we get thirty two thoughts. But I was yes. I was asking that where where does that originate from? Like, who created those? Who gave us the knowledge of? Uh, who gave us that mathematical explanation? Who uh, yeah, simplified so, it? Yeah, from? this this I can tell where you. Where does it in come history, from? Yeah, in history, the first time this thought. A word or male also it is called male this male or third word was used by it was one pandit called pandit venkat makhi he derived this concept of thought means uh, uh, why we need this concept of thought concept of thought the purpose of concept of thought is to uh, categorize ragas huh? because ragas yes. are, were al always sung in uh, indian music from don't know how many centuries back so yes, ragas yes. was always base of both north indian and south indian music but to uh, categorize them that to identify that these ragas are this type these ragas are this type to make some categories of ragas this thought system has was derived by pandit venkat makhi his name was pandit venkat makhi so okay. he gave the first time this mathematical explanation and according to carnatic system he gave this concept of 72 thoughts and then okay. people started exploring more and then uh, Pandit Bhatkande also took that concept and uh, he explained all these 32 thoughts and then he selected, out of these 32, he selected 10 thoughts which are more used generally. Yes, yes. We are taught in our syllabuses. Yes. 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 So actually thoughts are 32 but he selected 10 because he considered that first you should uh, learn these 10 thoughts which are more important melodies huh? more uh, mm -hmm. ragas are created from these 10 combinations that's why okay. he, uh, he selected this uh, 10 thoughts out of 32 and then yes. uh, he gave uh, ragas of these thoughts and then uh, for, for the beginners especially this concept of 10 thoughts is especially for beginners, huh? beginners. because okay. uh, the aim of Pandit Vishnunarayan Bhatkande was that uh, he wanted that uh, music should be taught in schools, uh, that many students yes. singing uh, and learning together yes. and to, uh, to make uh, music uh, available for such schools where more students can, uh, can come together and uh, learn and it should be a little easier for them to understand. Yes. That's why he derived this concept of 10 thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So many concepts he derived, like the concept of Sargam Geet, Lakshan Geet, yes. such concepts yes. were derived by Pandit Vishnu Narayan Bhatkhande. Okay. Because his aim was that, that he should not remain in some particular guru, one guru or one Pandit or one Ustad only is teaching to his students, but it can be taught in schools and institutions. Yes. Okay. Any other question? So maybe you can continue on that rag and all rag and all these different parts of these songs, the music, if you. Okay. So now uh, in Indian classical music and Hindustani music, the rag is a very important concept. And as I said, the uh, rag has the particular notes in particular order. So to understand the order, there is concept of aro and auro. Aro and Avaro. So as we have this, already we have the sequence of 12 notes, which is Aro. Aro means ascending order and Avaro means descending order. So the basic ascending order of 12 notes we already saw, the sequence of 12 notes. They are in increasing order. Frequency is increasing from Sa to Komal Re, Shuddha Re, Komal Ga, Shuddha Ga, like this. So out of this 12 notes, when we select some particular notes, and then we decide that in which sequence will go up and which, which notes will take to come down. This arrow and arrow can be same or can be different also. Some notes which you took in arrow, you can take some other notes in arrow. So like this, arrow and arrow are the base of rag, where you decide the, also the notes, particular notes and particular order of this note, arrow and arrow. 
So each rag will have this RO and RO, and this way the rag will be defined. So just to uh, give you one example, I'm giving example of rag Bhupali. One more thing we can we have to understand that rag can have maximum minimum five notes it should have, or it can have six notes, or it can have seven notes. Rag cannot have less than five notes. Rag cannot have more than seven notes. More than seven notes, we already understood that out of twelve notes, sare gama padhani we have to select sare gama padhani one out of two of re gama padhani. So it cannot be more than seven. So this is there that. Anyway, it cannot be more than seven, but we can skip one more note. We can skip two more notes, but we cannot skip less than this. We have to take at least five notes or six notes or maximum seven notes in R O and A R O. So I am giving example of Rag Bhupali. Sare ga pa dha and upper sa. Sa dha pa gare sa. So this upper You will not consider this upper is a saptak. I hope uh, most of you must be knowing what is saptak and what is higher saptak and lower saptak. Man, madhya saptak, mandra saptak, tar saptak. If you want to know that, uh, if you, someone doesn't know, I can explain. But I guess most of you must be learning little bit, so you know what is tar saptak, what is mandra saptak, what is madhya saptak. So this sa upper sa is having dot, which is of tar saptak. So, Rag Bhupal is using five notes. Sa, Re, Ga, Pa, Dha. Will not consider this Sa because this is a next octave, next subtract. And same in same order we are coming down. Sa, Dha, Pa, Ga, Re, Sa. So this becomes the base of this Rag. Aro and Avro. Particular note selected, and you can see here that Ma note is totally not taken. Either Shuddha or Tivra. No note out of Ma is taken, and Ni. Ni is not taken totally. Komal or Shud. So Mo and Ni are totally skipped, and out of other notes, one one Shud notes are selected. Re ga, Sa re ga, Po and Tha. Sa and Po anyway are selected. Sometimes you can uh, skip Po also, but Sa you can never skip in Ra. Sa is the base first note that you have to always take. Out of other six notes, you can skip any note. So here you can see that Ma and Ni are skipped totally with both versions, Komal, Tivra, and Shud. And uh, out of Re, Ga, and Dha, Shud versions are taken. Shud Re, Shud Ga, Shud Dha. Po is only one, and same sequence coming down with the same notes. Now the third part of the definition. Here I uh, which definition I gave. Particular notes selected in particular orders, which creates melody. So now we'll understand how this melody will sound. So I am taking one scale C. Now I am singing these five notes, and you see, I'll try to little bit practically explain the concept of rag. Sarega. First, I will sing the seven shuddha notes just to make you understand how melody is created when we take all seven shuddha swar, which is you all must have heard this. Sarega ma padani sa, sa ni tha pa ma gare sa. So you see when we sing this seven notes in. Ascending and descending order, R O and A R O, we get particular melody, and we feel we can feel that um, uh, feeling of that melody. Now, if you take only five notes according to Rag Bhupali, you are skipping Ma and Ni. So how it will sound? Sa re ga pa tha sa ta tha pa ga re sa. You see now, in these five notes, I can use here and there. 
just maintaining the order sare ga pa ga re sa ga sare ga sare ga pa da sa da pa pa da sare sa da pa ga re re ga pa ga re sa re ga sa pa da sa re ga sa re ga pa da pa ga re ga sa when you are listening to this melody some songs must be coming to your mind which, which are similar to this melody sa re ga pa da sa da pa ga re dha sa so i start with the very new song sung by arijit singh in rag bhopali sa re ga pa da pa tujhe yaad kar liya तुझे याद कर लिया है आयात की तरह कायम तू हो गई है कायम तू हो गई है रिवायात की तरह मरने तलक रहेगी मरने तलक रहेगी तू आदत की तरह तुझे याद कर लिया दिस सॉन्ग इज बेस्ड ऑन राग भोपाली ओनली दिस फाइव नोट्स आर यूज इन स्थाई इन द स्थाई ऑफ दिस सॉन्ग द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ सॉन्ग Only these five notes are used, but in antra some other notes are used. Then uh, I'll uh, sing some uh, more songs in uh, rag bhopali. I don't know you have heard this bhajan or not. This is a very famous bhajan in art of living. Hari Sundar Nand Mukunda, Hari Narayan Hari Om, Hari Sundar Nand Mukunda. हरि नारायण हरि ओम हरि केशव हरि गोविंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओम हरि सुंदर नंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओम दिस वेरी ब्यूटीफुल भजन इज राग भोपाली देन मेनी सॉन्ग्स लाइक इफ यू हैव हर्ड दिस सॉन्ग ऑफ लता मंगेशकर दिल हूँ हो करे घबराए घन घम घम करे डर जाए एक बूल कभी पानी की तेरी अखियों से बरसा दिल हूँ हो करे very beautiful song if you don't know some songs out of this you can write it down and you can listen to it on youtube later like one one more very good song of lata ji which are using same notes like jyoti kalash chalake jyoti kalash chalake ve gulabi lal sunehre रंग दल बादल के ज्योति कलश छल के ज्योति कलश छल के सो लाइक देर आर मेनी अदर सॉन्ग्स मोर आई विल सिंग टुमोरो इन मोर रागा आई विल गिव सम एग्जांपल्स ऑफ डिफरेंट सॉन्ग्स so um uh, okay about light music i'm talking about okay if you are, you are saying about ghazal then this uh, my favorite ghazal of mehdi hasan so we have only 5 minutes left for this class tujhe yaad kar sorry uh, this i already sang mehdi hasan ghazal duniya kisi ke pyar mein 
जन्नत से कम नहीं दुनिया किसी के प्यार में जन्नत से कम नहीं एक दिल रुबा है दिल में जो पूरों से कम नहीं दुनिया किसी के प्यार में जन्नत से कम नहीं आल्सो तुम बादशाह हुस्न हो उसने जहान हो तुम बादशाह हुस्न हो उसने जहान हो जाने वफा हो मोहब्बत की शान हो जलवे तुम्हारे हुस्न के तारों से कम नहीं दुनिया किसी के प्यार में जन्नत से कम नहीं I will also sing one uh, bandish in uh, rag bhopali so that you uh, realize how classical music when it is sung it sounds huh? one this is one bandish in rag bhopali jab se tum asana लागली जब से तुम सन लागली प्रीतन बेरी प्यारे बलवा मोरी जब से तुम सन लागली जो नैन नारे जो नैन कलना परत मोए चर्चा करे सब से लरिया जब से तुम सन लागरी जब से नाउ सी सी द मेन थिंग अबाउट इंडियन क्लासिकल म्यूजिक इज इलेबोरेशन एंड इलेबोरेशन इज डन थ्रू टू टूल्स व्हिच आर कॉल्ड आलाप एंड ताल you can write it down if you want alap and taal these are two tools used to elaborate a rag the song in the classical music is very little small song but the main part of the classical music is elaboration of rag this concept is very unique to only to indian music to elaborate a rag means to sing a song with many variations and extending that song because why we extend because we are in a particular rag and the particular rag creates one particular mood and we want to be more time in that mood so we don't want to quickly change the song that's why we keep elaborating a rag this is how we should understand the rag music rag sangeet jab se jab se jab se जब से तुम सन लागली जब से जब से जब से तुम सन लागली सो आई एम टेकिंग डिफरेंट डिफरेंट वर्ड्स एंड आई एम इलेबोरेटिंग जब से तुम सन लागली 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 So you can see, alap is a 
slower part elaboration through a slow speed combination of notes now what is tan tan is in a fast speed mm-hmm. so it is sung like this ja ba ja ba se tu basa lagani ja ba se ja ba se tu basa lagani ja can be more fast ja sometimes we don't use words of bandish but we use a ah. जब से तुम जो नैन न देखो तो हे जो नैन न देखो जो thank you so much rao ji thank you and thank i you. must tell you it was awesome that hour and half went by so fast for all of us i would agree with that anu aunty this was uh, rahul ji this was amazing you broke it down so well for beginners i think that foundational and i think we also you were asked some little, little complex questions and uh, thank you for your patience with uh, answering all of them thank and you. your singing was beautiful yes thank you so much and um, i hope you all will join tomorrow and just mark your the, the date date uh, the time time will change time is changing tonight to so many across the united states so make sure yeah. that you are coming on the right time for this this uh, schedule is for arizona time so find out your time when that will be and yeah. join us and please write your thoughts uh i think iec connect will use that too you know because we we are um trying to get people to really appreciate appreciate indian classical music and also you know appreciate not only the classical music the music which is actually created based on the classical music that is so important so we are not going just um, will nearly and just learn, hearing some of those songs that really distorts your mind but i my opinion i don't know but i think that is why i'm really interested to have a understanding of how our songs should be be that bollywood song be that gazals or any kind of song 
And tomorrow, we, I think I will ask Rahulji to explain our different folk songs that we do not understand much. That sure. would be great. And um, um, that how it originated and how it, and go ahead, Nilakshi. And no, I was going to suggest out. if if people have questions, if you can send them to Anu Auntie, uh, then we can consolidate and uh, give them to Rahulji ahead of the session. So we can club similar questions and answer them upfront. And then, of course, uh, we'll entertain uh, other questions as they come along. So I think that may be a very good use of the time tomorrow. Sure. So I'll say that uh, to anyone you can say, uh, whomever you know from this, like Anuji or Nilakshi ji or to me also, some people who have joined through me, they can send a uh, question to me. And I am sharing my WhatsApp number for the future. Uh, also for the questions for tomorrow. I'm just, I have typed in the chat, you can see my WhatsApp number. So you can send me questions for tomorrow. I will try to take it. Uh, this is an Indian number, means you have to put plus nine one and then this number. What you can WhatsApp me and uh, uh, yes, I, I will tell that only for uh, US uh, uh, people, the time is changing. But for Indian and for Mauritian side or from UK, some people have joined. So for them, time will remain same, I guess. Right, Anuji? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's only correct. The, yeah. Arizona Only time is changing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So for us, it will remain same. Like for uh, I'm in Mauritius, so for Mauritius, mm. it will remain same. Like today, nine to ten thirty tomorrow. For India, it will be yes. ten thirty to twelve. That's correct. Still, I, uh, I I'm open to some questions if someone wants to ask in the end. Any question or if you Any want to just say something or if you want to share your experience of this today's session. I guess uh, this is Savita Kevle and I just want to thank you. It was amazing. And maybe thank tomorrow, you. can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, and tomorrow, can you please uh, cover like how you emphasize the sum, you know, because when you sing, uh, the sum is not necessarily the beginning of the bandish or whatever. And right. it, so, you know, and then you can stress so that the tabla player knows that this is where the sum is, right? And yes. Can you please elaborate on that tomorrow? Sure, I'll elaborate. Yes. Sure. You remind me also tomorrow. I'll yes. surely talk about this. Yeah, and you're The concept of sum is very important both in classical music and also in light music. Right, right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more question or any suggestion or anything? And oh, one more question. I guess yeah. uh, Tanpura is usually said to Pasasa, but there are some ragas where Pa is Varjit and all that. So, right. how, so you decide where you said it? It depends on rag. Rag, okay. rag defines, as I told you, we have to select particular notes in rag. So if rag doesn't have pa, then we can't tune tanpura on pa. So then right. we can, uh, we have to choose other notes of rag. So if ma is available, we can select ma. If ma right. also is not available, we can Malcolm select shudni. Yes, so you, we have to select ma then, like this. Okay. Yes. But if Thank suppose you. some rag doesn't have ma and pa also, then we can select ni. If also knee is not there, then we can select some other note, whatever note we are using and whatever is a, a good a prominent note of that rag that we can select on Tanpura. So you choose that, uh, whatever you feel comfortable, right? No, we choose rag. And then yeah. according to rag, we have to choose. Means, uh, actually, we don't choose. We have no option. Means If there is no pa, then we can't put pa on no, Tanpura. But I guess um, if... Uh, um, Say rag has about six notes or whatever. Then you yes. choose you choose what you or maybe wadi and some wadi. This is how it goes. Uh, no, not wadi samadhi. If if pa is present, generally pa is only chosen because right. that is a very uh, 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 what you say. It is called a samvad. 
So some word of sa and pa is so prominent that we have we choose that only. There is no other better option than to select pa. But if right. pa is not there, then that the better option will become ma, like okay. that. And then if both are not there, then other options. Okay. Okay. Thank you. any question any suggestion any anything anybody wants to say anything so more i uh, namaste uh, rahul sir uh, yeah. i am your student also from yes. florida miami uh, due to some my health issues i could not uh, attend the classes for past few weeks so i had a, i will take this opportunity to ask you a question today itself before i forget sure. so just sure. now you said uh, that some we choose the tanpura based on the rag so right. for example what is a rag which does not have pa many ragas like okay. just now two two very common examples i give you is malkaus rag malkaus rag bagesh oh okay okay yeah. it just came from my curiosity because i thought pa is the is the some position which is very much needed in terms of uh, saying the sur or singing the surs that's yeah. what i so, uh, so as I, i i was explaining that rag cannot um, uh, skip the sa sa is there sa will always be there but all uh, other six notes can any of them can be skipped so pa also can be skipped so for hmm. example for malkauns uh, we will set the tanpura using ma or ni right yeah no ma only the best of option after pa is if ma is available then we select ma only okay 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 thank you if thank ma you. and pa both are not available then we go for other options oh okay 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 thank you yeah. thank you rahul ji it was very informative thank you very nice thank you very much for giving this awesome session my pleasure Thank you. It's credit credit goes to Anu and this organization. And thank you, Anu ji, for organizing. Anu ji and uh, you, this. You were so welcome, and I think. Um, Nilakshi ji, Anu ji, and this organization. Nilakshi is an IAC connection. We both uh, kind of, and this is all free because I really we both that uh, my school and that organization we believe in this. We believe that this is very important yeah, uh, for you to see, join. Yes, we we need to promote our. Uh, this uh, music our such age old tradition so we we need to preserve it and we need to take it forward yes so this is very much needed so much and i just want to find you. a better than uh, rahul ji who can explain from western to eastern to in all kinds of music he will have he has the knowledge and to explain those things why it is different and how it is similar so that yes. is my biggest thing that i i look for to see the cool thing the, the same thing similarities in the yeah. world in music so that is awesome thank you so much rahul ji it's already time thank you. and we will yeah. pick it up tomorrow then sure. thank, thank you okay. i'm thank turning the light, uh, recording off yeah okay i guess okay all right we'll see you tomorrow bye bye everyone thank you namaskar thank you